everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all as you can already tell from the thumbnail and the title of this video today we are talking about something that is pretty personal pretty invasive but I still think is important to discuss because we don't spend a lot of time talking about maybe these more unusual areas of health when you are somebody that has a vagina and I know I certainly didn't know anything about this before I had this experience for myself. So this is going to be <laughs> hard and awkward for me to film but I'm going to try my best because I do think this is so important. Now just to make things as simple as possible, I think the way that I want to handle this is to talk about everything in chronological order. How did I find out that I had a lump in my vagina? So about two weeks ago now, on a weekend, I was seeing one of my partners. We were getting up to a little bit of hanky-panky business and Afterwards, I noticed that I was very sore inside. Now, I don't have like penis in vagina intercourse, however, I do fingering sometimes, and I had never had a sensation like that before. We didn't really do anything that different, but I just noticed that I was so sore, and for like two hours afterwards it was pretty pronounced and then I noticed it for basically the rest of the day which was really really unusual and I was like okay that's kind of strange and then like a day later I was having also penetrative intercourse with fingers with another one of my partners uh, and I noticed the same thing and I was like gosh that is so weird twice something that doesn't usually happen with partners that have very different technique from each other and multiple days apart at this point. And also I should mention for people who don't know who I am, I'm consensually polyamorous and uh, I have multiple partners and so sometimes I do things with multiple people and it's fine, everybody knows what's going on, don't, don't freak out. Anyways, back to the actual story, I was like, gosh, I am so sorry, what is going on here? And so, I get in the shower and I inspect myself and I'm like, oh, moving around, seeing how everything is doing and um, I notice that there is a lump on the sort of right side of my vaginal wall that I've never noticed is there before. I'm pretty used to what the inside of my vagina feels like because I have to put in and take out a new ring on a fairly regular basis. So I was like, oh. Okay, that's not normally there, that's interesting, and it's not painful, it's kind of, it yields to pressure a little bit, but it's, it's, it's smooth, and it's, I, I don't really know what it is. And instantly, my mind goes to the fact that my family has a history uh, from multiple different people of endometriosis and PCOS, and I'm like, could this be related to one of those things? Because I don't know. And so obviously what I do next is I do some Googling and I try to figure out what this is. And of course, whenever you Google anything medically related, your options are it's nothing, it could be something, or it's cancer. And that's not really what you wanna hear. So I kind of eliminate some of the choices and I'm like, well, it's definitely different, whatever it is. Pretty sure it's not cancer. It looks like it might be a cyst. And there's a couple of different types of cysts that you can have. It could also be warts, but because of the size of it, which is sort of like, uh, like between the size of like a thumb and like a small pit from like, uh, a plum something around there like that size I was like well I know it's not warts I know it's not that so it's probably a cyst but I'm not totally sure and of course the cancer thing is obviously in the back of my head because when I was a freshman in university we all had to read a book called 
The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which is about a woman that discovers that she has cancer. And it's actually, it's a, it's a really good book. I would recommend it, but the part that stuck out in my brain was the part where she inspects herself in the bathtub and she discovers that she has a lump that ends up being cancer. I'm like, oh God, I'm going to be the wife of Henrietta Lacks. Oh no. <laughs> and so I'm like, what is going on here? What is this? And so I'm like, quietly stewing about it. I haven't told any of my partners what's going on yet. And I decide that the next best thing to do would be to have a doctor look at it because they're the experts. Now, obviously with COVID-19, not a great idea to immediately rush out to a doctor's office unless it's strictly necessary. So I end up calling the urgent care to see if I can one, make an appointment and also see if it's necessary in the first place. And so I get on the phone, there's a very nice doctor who's super understanding is like, okay, what's going on? And I describe how I found what I found. I describe what it is. They're like, okay, you know, it is probably a cyst based on what you're telling me, but we don't actually have the tools here to do a drainage or to do a biopsy if we needed to do that. So do you have a doctor? Do you have somewhere else you could go? And of course, because of COVID and because I work for YouTube, uh, insurance is not great for me. So I'm like, okay, well, I think I could go to Planned Parenthood. I think they do things like this. I've never been to a Planned Parenthood before, by the way. So I get off the phone with him the doctor also gives me a few names of some other places I can check out in addition to Planned Parenthood and I decide I'm going to look up what my options are. And luckily, because I live in a state that uh, cares about <laughs> uh, intimate healthcare needs, for lack of a better term, there are actually multiple different Planned Parenthoods within a fairly normal amount of driving distance. Unfortunately, it is basically impossible to get an appointment. Uh, none of them, any of the ones I can go to within like a two hour drive are booked solid for three weeks. And I'm like, oh, that's gonna be a problem because everywhere is that way. At any doctor's office I would go into is just booked absolutely solid. I'm like, I, if, if this is a cyst or a cancer or whatever the fuck is going on here, I do not want to wait three weeks to figure that out because my brain cannot let that kind of thing go. I have to know now. <laughs> and so I try to call because they say, oh, you know, if you call, there's more appointments available. We can book something easier. And I call and uh, I am 15th in line. <laughs> uh, that's gonna take a while. So I request a call back and I wait for the entire rest of the day. At this point, it's like 3 p.m. when I end up trying to call them originally. I wait the rest of the day and nothing. And I'm like, okay, I'm kind of having a little bit of a nervous moment here. So I finally tell the partner that I live with, Mr. Tex, what's going on. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I think I found a lump. I'm gonna try to go to Planned Parenthood. I don't seem to be able to go in today. I'm gonna to try and make an appointment as soon as I can. He's like so understanding. He's like, oh my gosh, I hope everything is okay. You know, he just, he holds me. He's very, very loving, very understanding, you know, all of the good, wonderful stuff. So I end up not being able to get an appointment for that day, but I set an alarm on my phone to get up as early as possible to either one, try and book a same day appointment as quickly as I can, or if you go into a Planned Parenthood clinic, if you are able to wait, they will try and see you that same day between other booked appointments to the best of their ability. And if they can't see you that day, they will give you the first priority spot for the next day that they can. So I'm like, okay, either way, I'm gonna go today. I'm gonna figure out what's going on here and we're gonna get this problem solved. So my alarm goes off, I wake up and I go to the Planned Parenthood website on my phone, which is super janky and super hard to book on your phone. I don't recommend it, but I end up being able to book something for that same morning in like an hour, which is fantastic. So pro tip here, if you do need to go to Planned Parenthood and everything is booked out for weeks, maybe try and see if you can book something for the same day first thing in the morning if you can. So I'm like, great, I'm gonna finally get an answer for this, this is amazing. I walk the dogs, I do my morning stuff, and then I go to the office. And I don't know how familiar everyone is with Planned Parenthood, so I'm just gonna describe what it's like and maybe it'll help you 
feel more comfortable because I know when I was in university, the one Planned Parenthood clinic that was in the entire city was constantly being picketed by anti-abortion people and it made it really hard to even walk past there, let alone actually go to an appointment. Now, for people who don't know, Planned Parenthood is not just for abortions. That's why I went there and was going there at this point in the story to figure out if I had a cyst or cancer to help get some help with that. They do tons of great things from STI testing and HPV vaccines and general education. Overall, way more than just abortions, but that's not really the point of the story. Anyways, I go there, super quiet, no anti-abortion protesters. Great, we're off to a great, great start. I go in and they check my temperature, they get my ID, they make sure that I'm the right person who has signed up for this appointment. They do kind of the normal basic intake stuff to let me know that, you know, my appointment time is correct and that they're gonna get the doctor for me and let me know when they're ready. There's two other people that are in the clinic with me. We sit like super far apart. Everybody's wearing masks. There's tons of hand sanitizer, you know, all of the good stuff that you wanna see during coronavirus times. When I am in the waiting room, I notice that there are three photos, like pairs of photos. They're all along one wall. I don't know if I'm describing this well. There's three photos and it's a gay couple a lesbian couple and a straight couple. And I just, I love that because Planned Parenthood is kind of filled with stuff like that where it's like, it's very representative of the diversity of people and relationships and the sorts of people who need healthcare like this. And I, and I love that. And I have to wait for about 20 minutes. So they are definitely running behind, even though it's first thing in the morning, but like, I get it. Doctor's offices are pretty much always behind schedule. So it doesn't really bother me that much. Eventually they're like, Evie, it's time for you to go in, you know, the doctor calls me, whatever they do, and they lead me straight back into one of their examination rooms. Now, <laughs> um, if you don't know, I'm a BDSM educator. I talk about BDSM, I do BDSM, and it just so happened that on the day <laughs> when I originally got really, really sore and started this whole process, uh, I had also done an impact play scene. And so I had a giant bruise on one ass cheek that was like the size of like a small dinner plate. And I had a little bit of a bruise on the other ass cheek. And I was like, I'm gonna have to tell these people a lot about my life, but uh, that's part of the process. So they start doing kind of the basic intake and they start asking me some questions about, you know, do you smoke? Are you pregnant? Could you become pregnant and you know, all that kind of stuff? And then they start to ask me questions about like, uh, are you monogamous? I say, no. Uh, are you polyamorous? Yes. Uh, do your partners have sex with people that have penises? Do your partners have sex with people that have vaginas? And I'm like, oh, we're getting, we're getting real personal here with the questions. I'm like, okay. And I, and I tell them everything that they need to know. And the person that's actually helping me out at this point is really, really wonderful, super nice. Uh, they have a rainbow lanyard on with pronouns and um, they're just, they're super wonderful. Everyone in the office I've interacted with at this point is super nice. I got two compliments on the mask I was wearing, like very wonderful people, very understanding. Did not blink an eye <laughs> when I told them about my polyamorous relationship. Uh, and they basically left it up to, at the end, you know, do you have anything else um, that you want us to know before we start the exam? And so I tell them, just so you know, I'm in a consensual BDSM relationship. I do currently have bruises on my ass. You may see them during the examination. I know that they're there. They are consensual. I just wanna make sure you're aware of that ahead of time. And they're like, great, thanks for letting us know. I'll be sure the doctor knows for when they come in. And uh, yeah, just thanks for letting us know. And they were just super chill about it no worries whatsoever. And uh, I just wanted to get that out there because I know sometimes people can be really nervous about sharing things like being polyamorous or being in a BDSM relationship with medical professionals because they're worried, I guess, about the, 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 the treatment that they're gonna get as a result. And uh, I have a big secret for you, which is there are a lot of very kinky doctors. <laughs> I know like at least a dozen people that work in the medical field in my local community. I know way more than that just from online, from people in my comments. Like there are a lot of people that are nurses and doctors and anesthesiologists and surgeons and EMTs that are kinky. So 
chances are nothing you tell them will be half as weird as what they experience on a daily basis working in the medical field. So don't worry about it, just tell them because everyone I've ever had to talk to about it has been very, very relaxed, not worried about it at all. But anyways, we get to the exam time. I am in the room for a little bit. I get to kind of browse around and they have like a really big poster of different genitalia and like, what does a penis look like? What does the inside of a vagina look like? Where are the ovaries? And uh, that's very helpful to have. They have a lot of different medical models. Overall, it's a very like comfortable space. It feels like being in any other doctor's office. And eventually the doctor does come in and they introduce themselves and they say, I have a resident with me today. Is it okay if they observe when we're going through this exam? And I'm like, yes, totally. Great, I get to teach a resident how to interact with a kinky polyamorous person that doesn't know what's in their vagina. Perfect, <laughs> love that. And so she just reiterates, you know, why I'm here and just wants to make sure she has everything okay. And she starts the exam and she puts me on the table and I have to, you know, take off my bottoms, you know, while they're out of the room, obviously, to mention that, yeah, I'm out of the room. I have to take my bottoms off, I have to get on the table and, you know, they, they put my legs in the little stirrups and I have to spread my legs and then they get at a speculum to make sure they can actually visually see what's going on in addition to palpating the area. Now they're really great. They ask me every single time before they touch anywhere. They let me know that things are going to be maybe cold or uncomfortable, all of that great stuff. Uh, and they start palpating around and they get the speculum out. I hate speculums. Don't like medical play. Don't like speculums. Could leave that by itself, but I understand why it's necessary for uh, the procedure, right? And the <laughs> resident is just sitting behind this doctor, uh, like listening to us talk about what's going on and how I found everything and and all of that. And just, you know, telling the story for the third time to get another group of people. Uh, and they're like, well, you know, we aren't really noticing anything unusual. Can you describe to us exactly where you found it? And so, I, you know, on the, on the right side of the wall, you know, kind of about like two inches in, so on and so forth. And they, they locate it. And uh, then they start kind of palpating it directly. And he's like, is this the spot you're talking about? And I'm like, yes, it is. And they're like, ma'am, that's your cervix. And I'm like, I don't know if you saw, I just spilled water. Um, okay. <laughs> All of this was because I didn't know what my own cervix felt like. And this is why I'm making this video, is because sex education in our country, and in a lot of places, is so bad that I didn't know that my cervix could just move around like a goddamn DVD player screensaver. Um, the thing that was on the wall, the poster that was on the wall that showed the genitalia, right? What does it show you? Vaginal canal, cervix, ovaries. You know, it's you see the same thing over and over and over again. Every single health class I've ever taken, any any YouTube video I've watched about vaginal health, the cervix is just there at the top, and this is the vaginal canal, and there are the ovaries, and that's what it is. Uh, depending on where you are in your cycle and your hormones, I didn't know your cervix could move around like that. I had no idea. And uh, talking about BDSM and to some extent sex is my job and I didn't know that. And I'm telling you this so hopefully you can avoid my embarrassing mistake of, of emergency making an appointment for a Planned Parenthood just to figure out that that's your cervix. And I did kind of guess that was a possibility right next to it possibly being a cyst, but because the doctor at the urgent care had told me that it was probably a cyst, I had kind of eliminated it being my cervix from the possibilities. Uh, turns out that's exactly what it was, and I just, I didn't know because I'm an idiot. Uh, and this is why it's so important that I think not only do we have comprehensive sex education, but that we encourage people to you know, understand really what their bodies are like. And if you have external genitalia, very easy to observe that on a regular basis. If you have internal genitalia, especially if you don't like use tampons, if you don't use a nuva ring, if you don't have penetrative intercourse in your vagina, then like you're you're not gonna 
know exactly what that feels like. You're not going to know what normal feels like for you. And so like me, if you don't do that, except for when you're, you know, putting in and taking out a new ring, you're not going to necessarily understand, you know, exactly where everything is aligned, you know, at certain parts of the month, or if something happens, like getting a UTI and things like that. Yeah, uh, that was uh, embarrassing because I had to tell everybody about my kinky polyamorous relationship just to admit that I don't know where my own cervix is. And it is embarrassing for me to have to admit that to the whole internet, but I think like my embarrassment versus being able to educate people about this important thing that I think we all should know, uh, super worth it for me because I get to talk about what you can do with Planned Parenthood. I get to talk about cervixes like for me is worth it. So yeah, your cervix can move around, but you know what the doctor told me is, you know what? You didn't know, you did just have a UTI. You did the right thing by coming in here and double checking and making sure. And really, I think that is what I want to get across here is I think in America, more so than in other places, we are very reluctant to use healthcare. And I can definitely be one of those people. So I understand it, but going and getting it checked out making sure that you know what's going on in your own body is worth it. You know, it took an hour of my day. I had a $15 copay. Like it was super, super easy. Definitely worth it for me to just have that peace of mind and know what was going on. And hey, you know what? On top of it, Planned Parenthood is amazing. They were like, hey, we see you haven't had an HPV vaccine. Do you want to get started on that? And I was like, yes, because when I was young and the HPV vaccine was first coming out, Basically, my family was told, hey, don't get this yet. They're going to make a better version in like a year or two. Get it done then. And then we never got it done. And I just assumed because I was no longer a teenager and I had been having different kinds of sex for a while now that it was no longer something that I needed to get done. And just after getting some education from the doctor about how it works, basically, it is a good idea to get it done even if you have already started to have sex up to the age of 26, which is what I am right now. So I literally have to get this done before my birthday. It is approved for people up to age 45, so you can get it done later, but it is a good idea to have it done because even if you have already been having sex, chances are you haven't been exposed to everything that this vaccine protects against. Uh, and I decided to get it done. And they were like, hey, do you want uh, a screening for chlamydia and gonorrhea? And I'm like, no, I'm good, but I will make another appointment for getting the second shot in the line of vaccinations for this. And I will also sign up to get my pap smear done because I haven't had that done and it is due for me to get it this year. So I'm gonna get a lot of my healthcare needs met. I'm getting my HPV vaccine done and getting my pap smear done. Uh, and honestly, I really wish I would have asked them for dental dams because they did ask me if I wanted any safer sex supplies and I said no. And I forgot how hard it is to find dental dams. They're like, it's like $15 for six of them on Amazon. It is it is a travesty. They are way too expensive. So I should have asked for some. Maybe when I go back there again, I'll ask for some dental dams. But overall, uh, learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about things that I should know about my body, and I'm getting some of my necessary healthcare needs met. So that's overall, I think, a great thing. Uh, I guess what I want to say is if you have any embarrassing healthcare stories you'd like to share to help me feel less embarrassed, I would love that. <laughs> Down in the comment section below, let us commiserate on all of the things that we feel like we should have known but that were never taught us because, oh my gosh, there is a lot of it. If you enjoyed this, if you want to see more from me, please do subscribe. My videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And as always, if you really enjoy this, if you want to support what I do, the best way you can do that is through Patreon. A link to that is down in the description box below. If you already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.